Hello there. Trying to roleplay? Struggling to step up your game? Would you like to make your character actually entertaining? Well, look no further. My name's Sass. Sass Frass. And I'm here to teach your ass... How to roleplay in Final Fantasy XIV! Today, we're going to focus on what you'll be staring at the most during your roleplay sessions. The text box. This is the meat and papodos. The cream of the crop! The best way to express detail and nuance of your character's actions, thoughts, and intent. Notice the different colors? Each of these is a different type of text box entry, and each one functions differently. Let's go ahead and start with the say chat. The text command to start this is slash say or slash s, and then a space followed by the text that you would like to be said aloud. This is the most basic of ways to express yourself verbally in the game. A message sent in slash say will appear to others in the vicinity around you, like your saying it. Brilliant. Allow me and Nazir here to display the range of say chat. Notice that Nazir's line, hello and welcome, doesn't show up on my chat log at this distance. But if I move a bit closer, you can see it show up on my chat log when Nazir enters it a second time into his chat log. This is because me and Nazir are now at the appropriate distance for using say chat. It's important to remember that emotes and custom emotes also share the same range as say chat. This type of message is used if you are RPing in a way that you want the rest of the patrons around to know of, also known as public RP. If your character is simply speaking without any inflection or action you want to associate with the delivery, this is how you would portray that. There is a way to type your message to indicate your character is speaking and not the individual behind the keyboard. You can do this by using quotations to frame your sentence. This is a fairly standard way of formatting speech, and it can also be used to display accents. For instance, Sass has a piratey sounding voice, being from the superior of all three city-states and all. So when speaking as him, I frame his sentence in quotes and change up the spelling to make the text match the voice in my head. It's a good way to add some nuance to your character's voice, and it's a lot of fun. I drop the G's in his words a lot and replace his U's with, you know, yeah, you want a beer instead of you want a beer. That sort of thing. This is obviously not necessary, but I enjoy doing it. Let's say you need to break character for a moment. A polite way of doing this would be to use double parentheses. For example, I need to take a dump. BRB would be how you could let others know you'll be AFK for a moment. Pretty much anything said out of character, you can frame in these double parentheses and people will know it's the individual typing, not the character in the RP scenario. In more laid back RP scenarios, people sometimes omit the double quotes, even the double parentheses. I'm a bit more rigid with my text formatting because I'm a fan of consistency, but I guess it kind of depends on the venue that you're at. Like I said in the beginning of the video series, all of them are different. Some people are a little bit more laissez-faire when it comes to the text box. And that's fine if someone is doing things differently in my venue. I don't really care. I just adhere to this way because it's just what I see people mostly doing. All right, let's talk about my favorite part of role-playing in this game, emotes, specifically custom emotes. The text command for creating your own emote is slash em followed by a space and then whatever the hell you want. The possibilities of using this are nigh endless. I've talked to characters who are mute and use nothing but emotes to convey emotion. It's actually pretty impressive what people can come up with. And it's, it's just a blast. I have so much fun doing it. Personally, I mute all of my basic emotes, and I'll type out the command for them instead, as long with doing the simple text command to make the animation happen. There are a number of reasons for this, but the biggest is to make uh, the experience more memorable, to make your character stand out. Using a custom emote can be the difference between Sassafras waves to target, and Sassafras waves target over to the bar, a smirk on his face. This can aptly be described as the virgin standard emote versus the Chad custom emote. Why just give a simple description you only have to press a button for when you can instead convey detail that shows you care about providing people a better sense of immersion? 
Sure, you can give a toast, but that doesn't explain your character very well, does it? Does your character sip their beer? Do they toss it all back in one gulp? Do they succeed at that? Why? Why not? Displaying this nuance will improve the experience others have interacting with you and help you flush your character out a little bit as well. And it's not just about the quality of the emote. There are certain things in this game that there just aren't emotes for. For example, there is no smoking emote. Nothing even close. So a custom emote here opens the doors otherwise closed. Yoshi P, for the love of the 12, please give me a smoke emote. Give me slash smoke. Come on, the NPC's got it. I want it. Give me. RP in this game is like watching a visual novel that you can interact with. You are splitting your attention on two different things. The text adventure occurring in the bottom left-hand part of your screen, which accompanies the visual spectacle of the in-game happenings. So, if you're essentially writing, reading a living book with others, why not write it in a manner befitting your character? As I mentioned in the previous video of the series, you can use slash tell and slash party to have a more private RP experience. The only drawback of doing things this way is that your emotes are still public. So if you want to keep your emotes private, you'll have to do this in the slash party and slash tell chats. This is where adhering to the double quotations rule helps. You can frame the action in plain text and then add the quotations for any speech that's happening during this. For example, I would normally use slash EM space sips from his flask in quotations, gods I'm old. This would create a emote with the same visibility and range as slash say. But if we want to keep it totally private, you would use slash P space sips from his flask and then in quotations, gods I'm old. This is really more of a visual drawback. Normally in public uh, RP, you can see the difference between your says and your emotes just because by default they're different colors. When you do everything in your party chat, it's all going to be just in the same color in your log, which is going to make it a bit harder to find certain things in the history. But it's really kind of a minor drawback. It's just a limitation to keep in mind. One of the far less common types of entries in the chat box you'll see is slash shout entries. In venue settings, these are mostly used by employees. Last call coming up, use a shout. Pulling a raffle, use a shout. Alone in a tavern as you look upon a bar top worn away by years of use and can't help but feel a strange sense of solidarity and nostalgia with a chunk of wood. Oh, you best believe you use a shout. Outside venues, slash shout has a wide range. It can be heard anywhere within a loaded area. For instance, if I shout in Limsa Lower Decks, I can be heard all the way by the airship landing, even if I'm shouting from the Fisherman's Guild on the other side of the area. I cannot, however, be heard on the upper decks, as they are separated by a loading screen wall. Granted, in an RP venue setting, the chat is typically used to just convey messages to everyone at once within the area. Same with P-Chat. I mean, a uh, slash hill. The chat box isn't without its shortcomings, however. Typing in this can be a real pain sometimes. The text doesn't wrap, so you're typing on a single long string of text. When working with a longer emote, this can oftentimes be cumbersome, as the visibility of what you're actually typing isn't all that great. There are some useful things about it, though. First off, the chat box remembers what you typed. Pressing the up arrow key will move to the previous entry that you entered into the field. This is actually useful if you want to bring up an emote that you typed recently. However, the chat box doesn't have an active memory of what you're currently typing. Meaning that if you don't press enter, but say you press the up arrow key by mistake, it will then cycle to the previous entry and disregard the one that you were entering, which can really suck if you were typing up a long emote. So rather than using up arrow keys, I would recommend using the home and end buttons on your keyboard. This will actually launch your cursor to the beginning and end, respectively, of your current entry in the field. Thankfully, the chat box also allows you to highlight, copy, and paste into it. Meaning that you can use an external tool like your computer's notepad or Microsoft Word or something, and then paste it into the chat box. It's a lot easier if you're working on a long emo to do it that way. Sometimes I wish the chat box had more flexibility and customizability to it, but that's a conversation for another video. 
a real-world benefit you get from doing this is your typing proficiency. Forget Mavis Beacon, RP in Final Fantasy XIV should be considered typing savage. You will get faster at doing it over time if you are consistently role-playing. Especially if you're visiting venues that have a lot of people in public chat and the text box is going a mile a minute. I'll go over venue pacing in a future video, but just keep in mind that all places are different and some places move very fast. Remember, master the chat box and you will master RP. That's going to be all for this one, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you liked what you saw, feel free to like, comment, and sub, and it helps grow the channel. Remember, one like equals one ear wiggle. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And don't forget to tip your bartender.